You may have heard about a recent and very exciting measurement announced by researchers at Fermilab, the accurate measurement of the mass of the W boson. This measurement was both made with unprecedented precision and, even more interesting, it disagrees with modern theory. If this measurement is confirmed, it could be a solid hint that we need to revamp our understanding of the laws of nature. The prospect of breaking our theories is an exhilarating one, and I want to tell you all about it. The W boson is one of the particles that transmit the weak nuclear force. It comes in two versions, with an electric charge of plus one and the other negative one. We don't distinguish between the two variants, so we just say the W boson. The other particle that transmits the weak force is called the Z boson. It is electrically neutral, which means there's only one version of it. The W and Z bosons were postulated in the 1960s, and they were discovered at the CERN laboratory in 1983. Our modern theory, which we call the standard model, makes no predictions for the mass of either of these particles, or for that matter, any of the subatomic particles. But it does make predictions about how they are related. For example, if you know the mass of a couple subatomic particles, you can predict the mass of others. I'll have more to say about that later. An accelerator called LEP operated at the CERN laboratory from 1989 to 2000. It produced some 18 million Z bosons, distributed between four distinct experiments. These experiments measure the properties of the Z boson to exquisite precision. It'll be a long time before the LEP measurements are beat. Indeed, they may never be surpassed. The mass of the Z boson was determined to be 91,187.6, plus or minus 2.1 million electron volts, or MeV. Don't worry too much about the meaning of these units, because I'll use the same units throughout. The important thing is the uncertainty, which is 2.1 MeV. The recent announcement by Fermilab is a measurement of the mass of the W boson with an uncertainty of 9 MeV. Now that's much worse than has been achieved for the Z boson, but before this recent measurement, the best uncertainty anyone could achieve for the W boson was about 20 MeV. So this is a huge improvement, and it's part of a multi-year effort to measure the mass of the W boson as precisely as we have the Z boson. Okay, so let's talk about measuring the mass of the W boson. The LEP accelerator wasn't a great place for making W bosons, so their measurements were all in the 50 or 60 MeV range. But the Fermilab Tevatron was a great place to make W bosons. The Tevatron operated from the late 1980s through 2011, and millions of W bosons were generated. There were two detectors located at the Tevatron called CDF and D0. The recent announcement was made by researchers using the CDF detector, and just so you know, I've been a member of the D0 experiment since 1994. So how do you go about measuring the mass of the W boson? Well, the first thing to note is that you don't put a W boson on a scale and weigh it. For one thing, they don't live very long. They decay in about 3 times 10 to the minus 25 seconds. Even traveling at the speed of light, they travel about a tenth of the diameter of a proton before they decay. That's long before they hit a detector, so how do you study them? Well, what you do is look at the particles into which they decay and measure those particles' energy and momentum. You then use the laws of energy and momentum conservation and work backward. This is how the mass of all short-lived subatomic particles are measured. This particular image is from CDF, and it contains two W bosons from top quark decay. W bosons can decay into two distinct paths. They can decay into a quark, an antimatter quark, or they can decay into a lepton, like an electron or a muon, and a neutrino. On the one hand, you can detect quarks pretty easily in your detector, but it's hard to precisely measure their energy and momentum, so this type of decay isn't used for precise measurements. On the other hand, modern experiments can measure the energy and momentum of electrons and muons very well, so that's attractive. However, on the third hand, Neutrinos pass through the detector without interacting, so you have no direct information about the neutrino. That's a problem, but you can estimate the energy and momentum of the neutrino by measuring everything else. Since the momentum is conserved, and the total momentum before the collision is zero, the momentum of the neutrino should be the opposite of everything else. 
You can then use the measurements of the electron or muon and the estimate of the motion of the neutrino to determine the mass of the W boson. So that's what CDF did. They measured the mass of the W boson to be 80,433.5 plus or minus 9.4 MeV. This uncertainty is half the size of the next best measurement, and that's amazing. But that's not the most exciting part. What's really exciting is that it disagrees with the theoretical prediction, which is 80,357 plus or minus 6 MeV. For those of you who are fans of statistics, this level of disagreement is seven standard deviations, so-called seven sigma. Since the agreed upon threshold for a discovery is five sigma, this could be a big deal. Has the CDF experiment broken the standard model? Well, maybe. Now, as a member of the competition, I would ordinarily trash talk the other experiment, but I really can't. While I will deny ever saying it, the CDF group is really world-class, and the person leading the W mass measurement is widely recognized as one of the world experts in the field. The result needs to be taken seriously. Of course, what is needed is an independent confirmation of the measurement, and that's where things get tricky. You see, this is an incredibly difficult measurement to make at the required level of precision. The tiniest mismeasurement or incomplete understanding of your detector can fool you. You have to look at the data from every conceivable angle. Let's give some context. The Fermilab Tevatron stopped operating in 2011, and this measurement just came out. That gives you some idea of the difficulty that's involved. So what about a similar measurement by the D0 experiment? Will we have anything to say? Sadly, no. We released a measurement back in 2012 with an uncertainty of 23 million electron volts, with every intent of making an improved measurement like CDF's recent one. However, after a careful evaluation of the data, D0 physicists determined that the beam had damaged the detector enough so that there was no way to cut our uncertainties in half. So there'll be no help from D0. What about the new kit on the block, the Large Hadron Collider, currently the most powerful particle accelerator ever built? The LHC hosts four detectors, two of them dedicating to studying high-energy phenomena, one called ATLAS and one called CMS. Do they have anything to say? Well, possibly, but again, as a needed reality check. Although the LHC began operating in 2011, the CMS experiment still hasn't released a high-precision measurement of the mass of the W boson. And the ALICE experiment did publish a paper back in 2018, but it only used data recorded in 2011. Furthermore, that measurement had an uncertainty of 19 MeV. A decade of recorded data hasn't been published simply because the difficulty in making the measurement at the required level of precision. So what about the future? This is the final CDF result, and the D0 experiment decided not to pursue a precision measurement. And while the CMS and ATLAS experiments will generate a seemingly limitless supply of W bosons, the experimental conditions are much harsher than those at the Tevatron. It's simply a harder measurement to perform at the LHC. Getting a more precise measurement than was reported by CDF may be impossible at the LHC. What we really need to find out if the CDF measurement is accurate is a new electron-positron collider. A high-energy E plus E minus collider could answer this pretty easily. And such a collider is already on the drawing boards, but the most wildly optimistic schedule has it operating in 2040, and 2050 is more probable. Either way, it's far in the future. So, given that the CDFW boson mass measurement is here and will be around for a few years, let's take a quick look at it and what it might mean. The plot you see here shows the situation. The top four measurements are from the LEP experiments. Then there is the 2012 D0 measurement and the 2016 ATLAS measurement and the new CDF measurement. The length of the red bar shows you the uncertainty. The gray bar is the prediction of the standard model that arises from combining precision measurements of other variables. And what you see is that the CDF measurement seriously disagrees with theory. Let's suppose this is real and not a mismeasurement. This implies that the standard model is not self-consistent, which means that some unknown physics needs to come into play. One can explain the discrepancy by invoking supersymmetry, but direct searches for supersymmetry have come up empty, so that's probably not it. But who knows? That's why science is exciting. This new measurement could be the place where our current understanding of the laws of nature unravel, 
requiring us to weave together a new theory. Or it could just be an honest mistake made by excellent scientists trying their best. Time will tell. So this was a fun video about an exciting paper. What does it mean? I don't know. Nobody does. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share, and watch more videos on this channel. They're all about physics, and what's not to like about that? Because, well, of course, physics is everything.